Well, introduce Michelle Bamberger from Concerned Citizens of Ulysses. We'll introduce the firm. I'm going to keep my introduction short because I'd like these uh, two ladies who came up from Bradford County tonight to talk to us to have as much time as possible. So I'll tell you the little bit that I do know about them. Um, they are neighbors there in uh, Bradford County, and uh, they've been neighbors for nearly 25 years, that's my understanding. Um, Carol, over there in the red shirt, is a conventional dairy farmer, and she's lived in Bradford County her, her whole life. Uh, Carolyn, here in the, in the green shirt, is an organic uh, dairy farmer who moved to Bradford County from Queens uh, in 1987. Um, uh, they both uh, started to get to know each other through their children uh, being in school together and uh, very much uh, got to uh, get to know each other uh, due to the drilling is issues and uh, leasing their lands and uh, trying to fight um, the whole thing that's, that's happening down there. And also it's become their mission uh, too. I've, I've heard about their talking all over. Uh, these two women are very busy uh, farmers. Uh, they're taking all this time to come out and talk to people and trying to make people like us aware of these issues and uh, what can we expect and what can we do uh, concerning this, um, that's what everything that's happening. So uh, please join me in welcoming Carolyn Knapp and Carol French. We had this all cleared up when we started, but. I'm going to start talking. She can play. <laughs> That's the way it works. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, we uh, released our land about 2006 in August. I have three more months, probably about nine more days and a couple hours until my lease is up. I, um, we did a lot of research after we signed the lease. We figured we were getting screwed. But... Um, the county never offered any information. You guys are receiving a lot of information. And yeah, you can take a trip down to Bradford County and look around and see what's going on, but go into the courthouse and you'll find out what kind of leases were um, signed. We're gonna tell you a little bit about the trickery that went on behind the scenes, even at, at our, um, on our kitchen tables, and how, well, I signed a lease. They, they gave us a lease. And then when they recorded the lease, it wasn't the same lease I signed. So there's, there's nothing true about anything they're offering, okay? Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Okay. Go ahead. You can talk for a few minutes. <clears throat> Why we do what we do, um, basically it's because of our families, our community, and to learn from the experience of others. We spend a lot of time uh, driving around in the field, looking at well pads, talking to people, talking to the workers. It takes a lot of time out of our everyday lives, but we learn a lot from it, and we feel if we can even be one step ahead of the way the gas company is thinking, we can make big strides. So now we're gonna go straight into the economic impacts, and, and we try to assess both the positive and the negative. Um, unfortunately, we haven't found too many positives. Our, our area is basically uh, stressing the jobs and the importance of the jobs, but like Dr. Barth said, there is uh, a lot of people, a lot of influx of people coming in, so the jobs aren't there. One of the other positives is also um, businesses, but the businesses that tend to <coughs> prosper from this whole um, development are the businesses that are directly service businesses to the gas industry. Um, either restaurants or drilling companies, and there are a lot of companies that were not in the area that are coming into the area because they weren't service industries that were normally into the area. So they're taking over a lot of the older, um, like for instance in our, in, in our town of Ulster, there used to be a carpet place that went out of business, so they took over that. Um, also, we would like to say that um, Pennsylvania politicians and the lawyers and some of the landowners are strictly looking at the positives and it's overshadowing the negatives. So some people have their blinders on, but we are seeing a lot of um, impact right now in Bradford County. We, 
we know a lot of people that are getting sick. We know a lot of people that have contaminated wells. And they have relatives and they do talk. And so the, the tide is starting to shift a little bit. Somebody, they're starting to wake up a little bit and wonder what's going on. But I have to wonder if it's a little too late because of the things that have been signed. So some of the positives, we wanted to tell you the positives first. Maybe you might forget them. <laughs> some of the positives was the bonus money. I only signed for $85 an acre. Uh, we have a lot of people that have only signed for $5 an acre. Um, there it, is about it really is a myth that uh, people got a lot of money. We've done some research. The majority of the leases, especially the ones that they're exercising now, are ones that didn't get the $6,500 an acre. Um, I think we figured at one time it was about 5% of the leases signed were in that top dollar figure. So not everybody prospered from that. Another way to generate money is the land use money. There are the agreements <coughs> such as pipelines. We're also seeing money coming out of um, Pound pond surface use agreements. And also you can, uh, for example, the driveway permits. Um, we have ordinances in our township where it says that um, whoever owns the surface of the driveway um, will be liable for the damages that would occur on the driveway. But you have to understand that what and what that implies so you negotiate out of that. The gas company is willing to pay about seventy-five thousand dollars to get out of uh, to get that permit because they cannot put a well on your property without a driveway permit and without a drilling permit. We discussed the jobs and the some of the businesses that pro prosper and that's that's your baby, the sale of mineral in interest in exchange for royalties. You had asked, we might have to move on, but that, that was um, in relation to the royalty interest in the subsurface you had put on that. Yeah, um, a lot of people, uh, we, we usually have a, a pie, but we're trying to really make this fast. You're testing us because our, our, our talk. <laughs> we're normally two hours. <laughs> okay, but this table is a uh, hundred acres, okay? Before I signed, I own 100% of the mineral rights underneath that, okay? When I signed, I reserved only 12.5% of that interest. So I became a, uh, a royalty holder. The royalty interest the gas company purchased from me. They sold that interest to other countries, to other um, family trust funds. We are finding family trust funds from Australia, from Texas, from wherever we have them in China, <coughs> Indonesia, all different countries are investing in the Marcel Shale. They can sell each interest in every formation underneath this 100 acres. Um, we were told that they are making millions and millions of dollars for every 2% on 100 acres, um, but I won't quote that anymore because uh, we don't have the That's privilege true. to find out how much they did pay, but a lawyer did tell us it was a lot of money. Um, so, other than that. Other positives in the businesses is additional revenue. We are like seeing the restaurants. Um, they are full. Hotels are full. They're building three more hotels in um, Bradford County right now. We have um, another man camp, and that, that was what Dr. Barth was talking about. They build a, built a 400 um, residential facility for um, their employees who are highly security. Um, they bring them in, they bring them out. Carol can tell you things about that. They have a fencing on it. When asked what the fencing was for, it was you know to, just to keep it looking nice. But it's to keep their employees in there. And they have guards at the door. They don't let them out. They only let them move from... from besides, besides milking cows, I go to the bar. I scout out gas companies, okay? I scout out those gas guys. Um, I, I watch what I drink so I can remember what they say. So what happens is... We do visit bars once in a while. <laughs> so what happens is every 14 days, your um, employee of the gas comp, uh, the rig, uh, they come in every 14 days. They are assigned one rig. So we have rig 41. You will have a van assigned to that rig. The, when the rig came out of Arkansas, this rig 41, it was signed in, uh, let's say, Leroy. The, the six employees assigned to that rig goes wherever the rig goes. So they come back and forth from Arkansas every two days or every two weeks. When they go back to man camp in Sayre, they are the they go back and forth by taxi. 
uh, so our taxis are making money. But if uh, an individual picks them up and takes them home, they are not allowed <coughs> out of the um, car. You have to leave your lights on when you let them off. You also, there is uh, the boss. He is usually uh, a sergeant out of the army. They hire them. And he is in the first um, trailer. And he watches the coming and going. And they have to be in by 11 o'clock. There are certain employees that are not let off of the man camp also. Um, they won't tell us why, but I do believe um, they view their uh, employees as expendable, just like the landowners that they are operating on. And we'll, we can talk about that later. The lawyers um, and the politicians. Um, the lawyers are, are needed for negotiating all of your agreements. Um, our, our, um, so this is a, a positive for the lawyers in the area, and we really don't have any good uh, oil and gas lawyers in Pennsylvania in our side of Pennsylvania. There's one in Pittsburgh. So that's, that's <laughs> something that if someone wanted to go to law school, they, they do very well. So that is a positive. The politicians are, are gaining from, from this hole as well in, in our state because they're, they're with the gas industry, so their pockets are being lined right now. Some of, the, some of the money that the lawyers are making, how they're gaining the money. In fact, I believe not only the gas industry, but it's going to be the lawyers and the politicians that are going to make money. Lawyers and politicians, they don't have anything invested except for time. Okay, what I believe with the lawyers, one, we hired the local lawyers thinking we were doing the right thing. They were not oil and gas lawyers. So they negotiated bad leases. Some people are suing out of their lease. So again, they're going to make another bout of money negotiating better leases. Still, they're not oil and gas lawyers. Also, they will make money off of um, the liability issues. There's a lot of lawsuits going on. Who is going to be liable? We um, had a, uh, one of uh, the, what are they called? Those guys that work on the rigs. The, uh, rough rough hands. Rough yeah, rough rough okay, he died. His family from Tennessee is suing the, the landowner. Land. He is suing <laughs> Nomac, and they are Chesapeake. suing Chesapeake. Because even though the activity is on your property, you will be found liable. And also, you have to be careful of the things you sign because in the early wave, not only did you get leases, <clears throat> and that was only for the subsurface. We ended up getting a thing <coughs> called a surface use agreement. In the tiny little print at the bottom, it says the surface owner would be liable for any death or injury that would occur on a well pad. Okay? That comes back on you. You could lose that farm. There's a lot of hidden things that we would love to share with you, but we can't in half an hour, so we're just going to move right along. Okay, royalty payments. Um, the lawyers are attaching their name to the royalty payments. I have a 12.5%. Um, some people cannot afford legal advice, so in return, they attach their name, and they'll take 2%. So then I will receive 10.5%, okay? Um, lawyers are also setting up trusts. That's, that's a big thing. They set up the trust, trust and the FLPs and the LLPs, and that's averaging between uh, five to fifteen thousand dollars, depending upon your setup, just to protect your your interests in your land. They separate the surface from the subsurface and create two entities. That's what they do. Yeah, and then also they are um, they are helping with the billing. For the mechanics lien? Yeah. You want to go ahead and do that one? The mechanics lien, you want to take it here? You want, well, we recently found out something that was very interesting is the, um, one, of, one of our neighbors was, is being sued by the um, chemical company who supplied fracking fluid to a well pad and was not paid by the industry. So they're now putting mechanics liens on the people's <coughs> properties for payment of this. So it's becoming a lien against your property because the industry isn't paying their debts. So, so there you go. You have to hire a lawyer to protect you. So you need a lawyer to protect you, which is why we have it under lawyers. We also, so see, more money. We also see lawyers are being hired for divorces. A lot of the women are taken off from yeah, Texas guys. Texans. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. It's bigger in Texas. They're making more money. So, <laughs> so um, then with the politicians... Um, <laughs> That's true. The decision making for, uh, we're talking about the politicians and we think that they should um, think about the community and also the environment. Uh, the decision making 
is for the safety and the welfare of whom they serve and protect, and may be influenced by the and they may be influenced by the monies offered by the gas industry. We just had primaries on Tuesday, <coughs> and the gas industry is a fact that the gas industry offered them money. One of uh, the people vying for commissioner refused it, so they boycotted her restaurant. They they pretty much shut it down. The gas industry did. So either you want to play the game or not. Gas industry. Um, the type of leases and agreements are prepared to favor the industry it serves, and you will see them once you see those um, the pipelines go through. And we do do meetings about pipelines. We do uh, have serve meetings with leases and stuff, so you can understand what's what to look for in your pipeline agreements and your leases and your compressor stations. Also, <clears throat> leases allow the gas companies to sell the subsurface interest. That's what we just talked about. <coughs> okay, and also gas industries uh, generate money from the sale of subsurface interest, which I told you, then they stock, they make money off of that, they make money off of hedging the market, and also they control the gas volume to the market. We have storage unit from Litchfield, uh, Bradford County, all the way up to Owego. There's six <laughs> voids in that area. And they can put, they can pay the landowner four dollars or whatever the commodity is, and they can sell it over to China for thirteen dollars. So, and if the market goes up here, they can sell it then. It's they're, they're controlling the demand of gas. So now we come to the negatives. Farming. <laughs> Those are some of the positives. But whenever we talk about a positive, we have to talk about a negative. So we can't do it. <laughs> this, this happens to be a well pad being designed on, on a piece of farmland. So um, they generally take just the pad alone when they're developing and they generally take 30 to 40 acres or 30 acres to, to develop it, sometimes 25, depending upon the size of the pad. And then the ultimate size of the pad gets laid back after they start doing their berms and everything. Some of the access roads could be long ways between, we, we <coughs> saw one yesterday that went through five different pieces of property and then ultimately got to the pad, to the access to. So there's a lot of... Um, it affected like three farmers, large farmers, mm -hmm. to put the access road in there. Again, they had to have one person sign that um, driveway permit. But if these farmers were smart enough, they could have sold that access and, but the thing, when you do any uh, agreement of any kind, you also have to have a map attached. And you always keep a copy when they walk out the door, both you and whoever's representing the gas company initial exactly where this driveway is going to be because they are cutting up <coughs> acres. They just diagonal it. And you cannot have use on this land. You, you, you lose the use of the land. Loss of crops. One thing that's really important, and, and we tell this to people, is to calculate your total loss of crops over the years of production because when you start doing that, the money that they're offering you is not sufficient to cover the calculation. And in most cases, you don't do the deal. When they came to me for an impoundment pond and wanted to give us $35,000 in the middle of our farm on an intensive grazing pasture, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't add up by the time we calculated it out. So that's why we said to walk out the door. So that's yeah. what they did. And pallet ponds are varying now from about 15 to 22 acres. She was offered only 35. <laughs> I, negoti I negotiated for 75, and her 35 was for 10 years. I was going for seventy-five thousand. Well, you have to give me a, a benefit of the doubt. I didn't negotiate. I just told them no. I said no. Come on in. It's like the spider inviting them to the web. It's like so we, we play with them. We, we do. We have fun playing to see what they offer, what they'll do, and what they want. <laughs> but anyway, they offered me seventy-five thousand dollars, and every five years I get to renegotiate. But I put conditions on there also. I got to pick out the liner. Uh, I want in seam liner. Um, these liners are being, see the seams are being glued together at the area where they're placing it and it's separating about within two years. Also I told them if it's truly fresh water you will pay for the independent water test that I would want performed seasonally, that's four times a year. 
They called back a week later and they said, yeah, $75,000 is not a problem. You can negotiate all you want every five years, blah, blah, blah. Um, this liner they had a problem with, he says, is it a deal breaker? I said, well, it depends on what the water tr uh, testing is going to be like. He says, there is not going to be no independent water testing mm -hmm. done on the water in the impound. Mm -hmm. So therefore, cha-ching, Chesapeake has something to hide. So it was no deal, shut the door. So one of the things that Carol talked about was a possible land lock. You have to worry about locking your land in, locking your timber in with, with pipeline because you can't cross that pipeline with a skitter, so you could virtually cut off um, your, your timber. In, you have to know what to negotiate with pipeline. We, right. we, um, when we do our pipeline uh, seminars, we also tell them that there is a bridge you have to negotiate and you have to have that map and uh, designate an area where the bridge is to be placed. You have to tell them where it is so you have access. You will not have access to this um, timber for years. It's not 20 years, it's more like 50 years. And if they are going to go for oil or for the, any other formation underneath us, yeah. it might be 100 years. So, so yeah. you know, you do not want to landlock any of your property. The <coughs> position of the well pads, um, one lady, she, the well pad was right behind the um, barnyard, right behind the barn. She couldn't get cows out. Yep, they had to sell the cows. Sell the cows. And then, so it was in the and pasture she park. Any, she didn't have any say where it went, they just put it there. Right. Yeah. The, the old leases did not allow the farmer to negotiate where the well pad would be placed. So then they would have to, um, they, they cannot have access to the upper, about 30, 40 acres up above. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no way. So you have to be careful um, when you're signing these agreements. And you guys, hopefully you guys uh, can learn from that. Or don't sign. Um, mm -hmm. thought, then you have to give some <laughs> thoughts to future developments you might lose, especially in the case of pipelines, like Dr. Dr. Brock was saying. You had, the pipelines are a mess up there. There's no, there's no regulation on gathering lines. You have gas companies that say they're not even going to share the same lines. So you can imagine in our area we have 10 different companies, not in our particular area, but in our county we have 10, at least 10 different companies working on. So if they each build their own pipelines through somebody's property, you know, you could have all pipelines on your property and never be able to develop it at all. So there's no regulation <coughs> to gather the lines. It's a proof of fact in Barnett, Texas, in the Texas area dish, they do have 11 um, pipelines running through a 100 acre area. So they, they have no use of that land as well. Uh, the loss of minerals in, uh, such as shale and topsoil is another farming loss. We had one particular gentleman who had an impoundment pond and he negotiated the impoundment pond. They happened to do it on top of a shale pit. The industry removed all the shale, used it for their operations and never compensated the landowner for any wow. of the shale. And that will never be um, re remediated or reclaimed. They call it reclaimed. So that will never be reclaimed and he'll be nev never be compensated for it. So that's a loss. Can you him. imagine what 17 acres of shale would be worth to that gas company? They used it all for um, the pads driveways. and the driveways. It's yeah. gone. So that guy, he could have negotiated for reimbursement per truckload, and it's gone. So we've been, we've been um, finding a lot of hidden costs. I don't know if I have that on the next one, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> Operating expenses increase. For the farms, the expenses that have increased for, for my family are bedding. Bedding's very hard to find. It's tripled in, in what it costs. We buy sawdust. The industry uses sawdust. So who's going to pay more money? There's uh, going to be a hay shortage this year because the industry is buying all the square bales out. Um, more money for hauling milk. That came to news to us probably about three months ago where um, we were forced to pay a higher uh, rate per month per 100 pounds because they couldn't compete with keeping the drivers because they were losing them to the industry drivers. They, so they, they had to pay to us our co op and that's eight cents a hundred. And that would go to the driver to keep the driver satisfied. Um, In addition to fuel surcharges that we have. Yeah, we still have to pay the fuel surcharge to keep the truck coming also. Okay. So that was uh, equating for me about $98 extra mm -hmm. just for um, my farm. And another operating expense, tires are really hard to find in our area now because they're buying them all up for the heavy equipment they're using that, that they're going through. So that it's really hard. Mechanics lean, we talked about that. Um, 
expenses not paid for the industry, commercial property taxes. These um, wall pads are being viewed now at, in the county as a commercial piece of property, so they're going to be increasing the property taxes on us. Increased insurance costs, and in some cases, you're not able to get the coverage for the, um, the well pad. Uh, there's a lot of um, insurance agencies that are sending out uh, exceptions, saying that it's not going to be a covered uh, damage. So if you have something where it actually goes to fire and goes into your hay field, it's not from the gas pad to your hay field, you'll, you won't be covered for it. So you have property value loss. Um, in our particular area, when they, when they lost their water, their source of water, one family's house went from $350,000 to $29,000 overnight. Oh, well, in fact, all three of them on that road. Yeah. But then we were talking to some, a, a farmer that lost her water as well. She said that she had an appraisal done, and it's 80% less, worth 80% less. Mm -hmm. So we have, and then you have the increase in medical costs. There's a lot of people that are getting sick from uh, respiratory illnesses, and um, we have a lady in, in, in our um, immediate neighborhood, her, her spleen just burst the other day. Uh, that was you know, related to the water contamination. It, so. And the thing is, you hear and you watch on TV that, <laughs> um, you know, everybody wants, because they're dealing with oil and gas, they have money, we're going to make these false claims. But in this case, in a lot of cases that we're running into, um, they're afraid. In fact, yes. she has not contacted the EP. They are living with contaminated water. Since, since December. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they run down to their um, daughter's house and get fresh water, and that's what they drink, but they still bathe in it. She has an incision from here all the way down. And she has to bathe in that. She also is doing her clothes in that. She's washing her dishes in that. So and now she has kidney stones. And everything is adding up to, what did you call it, 2B? 2BE. 2BE has all those kind of symptoms. But it hasn't been you know, established by the medical <coughs> community right. yet. So it's we, we can't actually it. we're speculating, but it's quite of evidence because of the fact that it, you know, her water contaminated. She's never been sick, and all of a sudden she is. So needs to be looked into and um, we're hoping to help her and that's what we try to do. The loss um, of water though, I want to also remind you guys that they will construct these little um, little buildings and they'll put filter systems in there. The water coming in, it, it goes through a filter system. That's costing these families almost 300 to 400 dollars extra a month in their electric bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though you lost your property value, you occur all these different additional Extra costs, costs. Mm -hmm. and you don't even think about them. So that's just another one that I want you to think about. The legal bills? Yeah, legal bills, we discussed that negotiating and fighting your um, case against the uh, industry. Cost of an alternate water supply while waiting for the decisions of the agencies and industry. It takes upwards of six months or more to convince the industry that you need water. And then for the DEP to cooperate and, and come down on, on uh, the industry to get them water. So we have families that have to supply their own water for six months. We also have um, <coughs> letters that we are collecting where there is correspondence between the landowner and DEP. And DEP at one point says, yes, there is methane migrating, but they don't talk about the chemicals. And then a little later on, about two months later, DEP says, well, we don't find any methane migrating to the area. But yeah, nothing's changed. They still have the chemicals and the methane coming <coughs> into it. It's still questionable, water. and we haven't found too many that they have been willing to provide water for the livestock. So um, I don't know what's going to happen in the case when, when a big farm goes out and having to supply um, large amounts of water because it's hard enough to get a small, what they call buffalo, in front of your house. I can't imagine that a truck would have to come every every day and deliver a, a big tanker. Do you guys know what buffaloes are? Yeah. No. No. They're, they look... Do you have a picture on here? No, I don't. They're like, they, uh, they kind of look like a, a big plastic container with a, um, a black spigot on top. They look... I, I, I describe them as a calf ha house, but all full. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's rat and it holds water. It's supposed to be... Um, they're generally about this big. I guess they probably hold 250 gallons of, of water, and that's how your water is delivered. It's put into that. They don't even let you know where it comes from. You just get the water. And you do order it. You do order it. So like at Christmas time, if you have 
guests coming, you will have to yeah, order, extra. order extra water for your guests. Okay, so that's it's quite an inconvenience. And the lawyers have the gall to call up the landowners and say, "Hey, is this really an inconvenience? How can it be? This? Yeah, mm -hmm. how can it be an inconvenience? In reality, you lost your water source. You are relying on somebody else to supply this water source. For me, it is to, so I could continue a business, and I don't think they're going to do it." Okay, let's look at that. Um, this is, then we'll skip on, but I just wanted to also talk a little bit about here about uh, the misconception that all of, if you're in a lease, all of your property in Pennsylvania, if you're in a lease, they can put a very small percentage of your property into a production unit. So if you have a 300 acre farm, they could actually put 0.009 acres in a production unit, and that's all you get paid for. So the rest of your land could be out of that unit and you get very small amounts. Yeah, and I'll draw And they're in control. So. I can draw you a picture where they even, the production units, here's a unit, let's put it this way. There's a unit this way. There's 30 acres in between. And this is the farmer. And they have about 80 acres in this one. But they could get more if the 30 acres was included in this production unit. But the gas company chose not to because we have a thing, it's called the right to um, capture clause. So they can capture the gas in between the production units and they keep that for themselves. Okay? They also have a lease out there. They had a special signing uh, March of 2010 that we kind of interrupted. But um, what happened was it said that if you did not generate $50 a month, it would roll over and you wouldn't get paid for that product, for that. Even though you were in a production unit, it's like for the four to two acre plots, if you did not generate $50, you would not receive any royalties at all. So in reality, the gas company has the right to make a production unit, a 100 acre production unit with only these two to four acre parcels in them and never pay a royalty at all. Okay. Two other things I wanted to touch on on the negatives was the loss of our retirement money. I don't know about other farmers in the area, but my husband and I have always treated our home and our farm as the only retirement we're ever going to have. And if we, because we didn't have any cash to put in, so now if it gets devalued, there goes our retirement. The second item that I that came to mind when, when Dr. Barth was doing it was the future flooding due, due, due to erosion. I don't think anybody has taken into consideration what all the land impact of the pipelines are taking away all of the well pads, all of the driveways they're putting in in relation to our floodplain right now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately in our state, they are putting well pads in front floodplains and they're not stopping that. They're allowing it, the Department of Environmental Protection is allowing it and if the floodplain is going to increase, we're in trouble. Okay. We have five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> Skip this one. Okay. Unless you see something from Oh, the infrastructure is a biggie. You know, your, your infrastructure, our infrastructure was not set up in any way, shape, or form for this influx. We have people, I, I live on a road where um, I used to be able to know exactly who was coming down it. Now there are trucks flying by every day. You know, a hundred trucks. Also, also what that meant was for the businesses, and we're going to hit the businesses, aren't we? Uh, probably. All right, anyway, just keep going. <laughs> we'll cover it in Q&A. Public issues, <laughs> public issues, we talked about the increase in crime. Um, we just had, we just went to the township, the um, Commission. county commissioners meeting and the sexual assault crime was up. More sexual assault has happened in one month than has happened all of last year. But they're not attributing it to the gas industry. They did preface it with that. So, um, How they know that, I don't know. But there is an increase in crime. You see the paper is filled with people, DUIs, uh, accidents. Accidents are, are really bad. We've lost a lot of um, young, people. young people to getting hit by water trucks. Um, a lot of these were 20 to 24 year olds. They left behind one to two year old children. Um, on our road, we call it Gent Hill. It goes down to the bottom. There's uh, a stop sign. They are flying right by them. Uh, they hit a, a, a farmer and he lived. Uh, his father wrote on the thing on the road stop ahead 600 feet. They didn't like that. The township didn't like that. No, the county found them. Actually, it was PennDOT that found them. Did they? Mm -hmm. A week later, a girl's killed there, left behind a baby. 
then the same day another water truck missed that and hit the field and another truck rolled that same day okay so lots, there is lots of accidents i mean it's it's, a, it's <coughs> we don't i don't travel as much anymore i stay home because it you're putting your life in your ha own hands when you go out there in that car uh it's scary there's a real strain on housing people in our area are, are getting displaced people that have lived in trailers mm -hmm. or small homes and rented them for a long time they're being asked to leave because they can get more, more money from the gas company um i i feel for the elderly and i feel for the women uh single women with children um but i don't uh, our commissioners are saying that it is because of um greedy landlords and that's not true when the gas company came in here chesapeake was the first one in bradford county they said i will pay you twelve hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. and they chose which houses they wanted and so everybody got word of that and then it went to twelve hundred and eighteen hundred dollars you can't find a home cheaper than that <coughs> business losses Tor the tourism um we work with uh, particularly with some general a gentleman that has a bed and breakfast and a blueberry farm and he's seeing a change in, in the people that are coming to his establishment, questioning the contamination of his product. Uh, Carol talks about the dead zones, and that's associated with, uh, Dr. Broth talked about that out in... Uh, out in Colorado, we like to hunt out there. Um, there's areas that's called dead zone. You're, there's no vegetation that grows there, there's no wildlife, and the population, they left. They cannot survive in that area because... And, uh, Nobody's talked about the soil contamination. There's a lot of spills in our area. DEP nor are the gas companies removing that soil. But if I dump diesel fuel down there, I would be fine, and that soil would have to be removed. They are not doing it at all. Not even in Leroy did they do that. Yeah. Our downtown stores, and that was the, that was the Bradford County. Uh, our downtown stores are experiencing pro parking problems, um, particularly down in the courthouse in Tawanda. The, the courthouse is filled every day with, with people that do title searches. In fact, they had to open it up at night because they had to use it so much. Um, high traffic areas, there's a lot of truck traffic coming through, so that makes it difficult for the downtown stores. Uh, some of the business losses are some businesses are not being paid. Um, particularly in our area, there were quite a few businesses that were left unpaid for 180 days by the gas industry, and then the gas industry took them over and um, now owns most of them. Like quarries? Quarries are a big interest for them because they need the rock. Yeah. So if they don't pay them in the 120 to 190 days, they acquire them. Also, we have had they some gladly take mechanics. them over. Yes, that's that's how they acquired Nomac, and that is a drilling company. They acquired that by not paying them. Um, they went they went bankrupt. And then so they yes they right. yeah they're unable to meet their bills. So sometimes they don't go bankrupt, but they just can't operate. Um, business losses, unable to get employees. Some of the local businesses aren't able to compete with the salaries that the gas company has, so they're hard, finding it hard to maintain staff, like places that pay minimum wage, like McDonald's. And they're just having a hard time. This, this is one of our, the, whole, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, it really is important when dealing with the gas industry to know your definitions because what you think is, is a, a definition of something and what they think of a definition of something is way off difference. We talked about the fresh water. Um, I tried to pin them down to a fresh water definition and they just sort of laughed at me and says, oh, don't you know what fresh water is? And I said, no, I don't. Can you tell me what it is? But we have come to learn from the Susquehanna River Basin Commission that fresh water is considered refreshed Frack fluid is considered fresh water. All, all they can do when they're treating frac, uh, water, frack water, they can only take out four chemicals, and that's strontium, barium, uh, calcium, and magnesium. Okay, and, and, and the definition, the industrial definition is, um, is, is a low and dissolved salt less than 2,000 parts per million. That's the def definition of fresh water. And our Susquehanna River Basin Commission is encouraging the industry to use sewage effluent in filling up the impoundment ponds. What's that? Coal mining? And coal mine drainage. Yeah. They're they consider those as fresh, a part of their fresh water <coughs> operation. So. And this is how we, how we found this out is by going to hearings. We go to our township hearings and they pull these guys in and uh, they, we ask them the questions. That we ask very hard questions. You got another questions to ask, and you learn a lot. Um, Production. Um, 
this was, this was one of the aha moments for Carol and I. Uh, production, you would think that production meant that the gas was going to market and that one was getting paid for it. But the definition, the industry definition of production is bringing the gas to the surface. Period. Period. So all they got to do is to make your well producing. So if you have a lease that says they're obligated to do a producing well, all they got to do is bring it to the surface, but they don't have to send it anywhere. You could sit there for 20 years with uh, lost acreage. You could have contaminated well your property. You lose all of the value of your property, and you still are not generating any money at all. And remember, off that they're well. always in control of that switch. And they have turned that switch off on people such as the one in, in Granville Summit when they don't act appropriately. <coughs> so, and the royalty interest? Okay, That's royalty. your baby. Yes, it is. Like I was telling you before, when we, we owned the whole royalty interest, then we became royalty holders when we did the leasing. A royalty interest is defined. Ownership of a percentage of production or production revenues produced from lease acreage. The owner of this share of production does not bear any cost of the exploration, drilling, producing, operating, or marketing of any of the ex other expenses associated with drilling or producing of any oil or gas. But me, I am the royalty holder, I will be paying all production and marketing costs. So in other words, those trust fund, the people on uh, the family trust over in Australia, people in China, Indonesia, those families that bought an interest in my property will not have to share any of the costs, only me. Also, I would like to talk about severance tax for really a quick second. In our leases, you, the landowner, is responsible for severance tax, excise tax, and production tax. The gas company, if you look farther, they will not bear to, and they do not have to pay severance tax, excise tax, or production tax. So as New York State residents, you should start looking into an impact fee for every disturbance, such as well pads, for pipelines, for compressor stations, and for your impoundment ponds. Don't put $10,000 down. That's what Harrisburg is talking for us. We're talking millions. We talk to people in Washington, D.C. that do work for EPA. And they are talking millions and millions and millions of dollars per disturbance. Safety. That's all because of environmental and the loss of water. Safety, how close is too close? We'll go through this quick. This is, um, they can put a, the center of a, actually it's the drill, the bore, the well bore, 200 feet from your house. That's what they're allowed. The industry does defines safety differently. So again, when you're looking at your leases, you need to know how they define safety because it's not the same as you would. <laughs> and I want to ask you guys, and we'll just hold it up now. Right. Safety, uh, and this is from Engrafia, it is open to one's tolerance. Are you, what, how, how much can you tolerate to define safety? Okay, that's, when you're doing your leases, when you are allowing this gas industry in your area, what are you, what is your tolerance? I believe that safety should not be the subject of altering one's quality of life for another's interpretation of quality of life. For example, there's people in towns that expect to have air conditioning, have their lights on all day, have dryers. Think of it as my blood, my neighbor's blood, the people in Paradise Road, the people in uh, Granville Summit, their blood is going through that so you guys can en enjoy the quality of life. Okay. I'm the pictures, but. This is our roads. These are two feet deep. This was a state road this winter. The, uh, it's got a heck of a bump right here. You fall right paved. off. You fall right off right here. Originally paved. Yes, yes. it's a hard top. Yes, this is a state road. This is this is chemical stored 200 feet, 100 feet from someone's home. This is endemic. This this area here is this called a, a frat farm. It was a frat farm. What they do is they stage the fracking operation and what they do is they put these um, above ground pipelines and they run it down onto this other farm because he does not want to see the disturbance and the pad was too small so they will, and here it is, here's the black line. That's a staging operation, Those are, that's the frack fluid that comes through. Right here, it's coming right down here so it's getting ready to frack that. This is going, they're going to frack that pad. These are, this is a pipeline put, being put in and they can be above or below ground it's the air pollution coming from one of their compressors on a well pad. Yeah. 
This is called temporary compressor stations. We asked them, what do you mean by that? They said, well, that compressor station could stay on there for about five years. This is the area. The farmer uh, has 206 acres. The well pad was put in there. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, she's in training. <laughs> <laughs> this is an eight acres. This is about 30 to 40 acres of pasture behind it. They cannot, they don't have access to that property behind there, okay? Also their methane level is 56 MGLs. It should not exceed over 10. It happened in June of uh, 2010. Okay. In November, they finally, you want me to go I'm, I'm turning. All right, go ahead. Go. <laughs> um, this, this was a, there was a, a chemical spill off of a pad, went into somebody's unleased property, and this is actually the burn from the frac fluid. Um, these trees are being cut down by, by Chesapeake. DP told them, just Chesapeake cut them and buried them. So we were over there taking pictures. In three weeks, Whoa. three weeks after they, they dumped 200,000 gallons of hydro um, frac fluid in the pond, and then the 500 gallons. gallons. They didn't have to notify the landowner about the frac fluid because it wasn't a controlled issue, but they had to for the hydrochloric acid. So that's what it, that's how it got the. The spot. well pad was 100 feet from the private pond. This is the pond, and I want to tell you about the color in a minute. When the EP came on the scene. They asked Chesapeake to pull it back 200 feet. They did. When they did that, they cut the trees down. They had to bury them. So you, when you go there now, you will not see it. Okay, that's the this pond. This pond has the chemicals still in it. It happened March 2009. The reason why it's green is cool and is cloudy that day. But if you want to go on a nice sunny day in July, it will be brilliant orange and yellow. And because it, and the chemicals it, are still in there. And it sits there, there and it overflows into the tributaries down below it. This is this is the Phillips's um, water supply. It's that's a buffalo. That's a buffalo. That's the top of it. Well, yeah, and it's in the filtration <coughs> system. That's the water that they are expected to drink that comes from their well. <coughs> this has chemicals, and they are having some very. And it has one of those. Situation. It's been found to have one of those chemicals that's on the back of that gentleman's shirt over there, glutahaldehyde, and um, the gas industry is saying that it could have come from some, somewhere else. <laughs> are they got the water in? No, this is coming from their well. Yeah, that's uh, and this and this still goes through the filtration system that Chesapeake has provided. They're expected to drink that water, and that that chemical is still coming through. Mm -hmm. And he poured us a glass, and it looks just like uh, about two percent milk, not yeah. as thick, really and thick. and it vapors right off the top. We so see a lot see of radioactive it. materials around. Um, yeah. well, one of our friends took a picture of that off the well pad. Um, this is a, a farm down my road, and that's that's being drilled. That's one of the wells within a, uh, a mile radius of our home. This is in Canton, over by the the by the blowout, pretty close to the blowout. In that area, there are five pads and an impoundment pond in one square mile, and each each pad is going to have eight wells on it. So that's eight times five, 45 wells in one one square mile. Reason being, please, sorry, this land is all far our farmland. And also, it's leased, but over here is state game land, and they cannot drill on that. So that's why you're going to see a boom, 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 boom. They're doing a lot of wells. And they're putting the laterals there. underneath the state game land. The farmers will see the um, the disturbance, but will not receive this the royalty. This is an older uh, woman who owns a farm, and um, she signed an impoundment pond agreement. They told her it was going to be across the road. She signed the deal. She didn't have a map included. They said, we're putting it behind your house, and that's where it is. <coughs> this is another pad in between all the farms. I guess to sum it up, um, they use the patriotism theme on us um, to when tell us we're doing it for the good of the country and that we will, we will be our, the sacrificial lambs for, for the, the country. Well, well, when they came with the lease, they said, Show your patriotism because don't you want your nation to be um, energy independent from the rest of the world? Of course, we are patriot, patriotic. And that's it. And then we went to other areas, and now they said it's your duty to sacrifice so everybody else can enjoy um, the quality of life that they enjoy. So we have become sacrificial lambs. I would like to share one. Can I share one thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what Chesapeake provided me. I had five water sources done. This is how thick it is. When you guys, there's a few things you guys can do for yourself. 
get a water test done. This is my independent water test. This, when you do independent water testing, you want to look for a QAQC, full data report. QAQC means quality assurance, quality control. That will provide how the sampling was done, how it was properly purged. You want to bring your water so it stabilizes before sampling is done. A lot of labs are coming out hiring these techs to sample your water. They might purge your water for about eight minutes. This is about an hour and a half he purged my water before my water would stabilize so he could collect the sampling. You want a true test because your water is, I call it virgin water, before anything has happened in your area. Therefore, you have something to, a leg to stand on when you're fighting for the quality of your water. Now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> in your area that the industry could use as a um, exception to what happened to your water or to say, oh, well, they had this big apartment house built right next to them, so that could have affected the water. So unless there is a major disturbance in your area, that's a good baseline test. The closer you are to drilling, the better you are. But you don't know because so much drilling activity is going on in our area, and it has been found that it can be affected miles away. Yeah. Also, three months of your land, if your water is contaminated, <coughs> you're drinking it. So, you know, until the next time you have a test, you're drinking well, contaminated you water. So those. it's, it, it, you know. Well, if you, you can pretty much, there's only one, this, all right. Well, we, Carol and I have to go on a step further. What we do is we have a TDS meter. Our TDS meter, we test our, te our, 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 our water either on a weekly basis or daily basis, depending upon the drilling activity in the area. And a TDS meter is an indication of a change in your water. What we do ask people is, if you do have a uh, rig coming into your area, you get an old calendar, you know, the one that you're not using, and you mark down, rig so-and-so on so-and-so's pad started drilling today. And then, or else, in fact, when they start building the pad, because we have so much rock, they're blasting it, and sometimes that can alter your water as well. You take a picture of that water, every and every yeah every day as the activity is increasing, you will notice that there's a change. We have had blue black water, we have had white smoky water, we have had <laughs> you can put your face down to it and it prickles up on your face. That's a lot of nothing. The, there are some people that, that notice that there is no change though, it, and then the, then the health problems start going. Yeah, then so. you start getting dizzy and your hair starts falling out. Then you know there's problems left. Yeah. Then you want your water tested. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the uh, sacri sacrificial lamb metaphor. Um, rest assured, Pennsylvania really has helped us in New York uh, rally because we see how much is going on. And, um, you know, I feel really bad for you folks having suffered so much, but we are really learning from what you've suffered through and being able to be strong and make sound decisions and force our politicians to make sound decisions right. about you know, the hydrofracking, these companies coming in wanting to make lots of money off, 
your blood and hopefully there nobody else's blood. There are some counties in New York State that w I, I deal with some of the people across the border. They're mad. Oh, yeah. They are mad because if Pennsylvania screws it up, we will not be able to get drilled on. It's like mm -hmm. they don't understand the whole story. That's why we're telling a whole flip side of what we really are experiencing. And there's so much we could <coughs> tell you. I mean, there's a lot. It's just lie after lie after lie. It, and in fact, we don't know who to trust anymore. Sometimes it's like, man, do you trust? Who do you trust? You can't trust your politicians. You cannot trust your lawyers. Neighbors, neighbors are turning on neighbors. Families are splitting up. Yeah. It's, you know, it's happening every day. Yeah. Hydrofracking. Social hydrofracting. Yeah. yeah. That's Lisa, it. Can you talk about how they're turning neighbors against neighbors? Because that's something that we would want to protect against. All right. That. For example, me, we had a well drilled on a, um, our neighbor three years ago. It's a test well. My neighbor only owns two acres. And they're mad at us because we own 160 acres that surround them. We will not sign a pipeline agreement. They think we are withholding them from receiving royalty payments. There's no way that they will receive royalty payments off a test well in the first place. They don't understand that. I will not allow a pipeline on my property without proper provisions, just like your leases. If you do a lease, you have to have proper provisions. By the way, a lease is not a, that is not a true term lease. It looks like a term lease, but it's only a sale. If it is a lease, you should be able to negotiate that every five years or whatever you pick, um, even though you're held by production because it should be a term lease. The other thing that the industry does as far as the neighbor thing is um, you'll go to their meetings and they'll say, we can do this. They'll show you their big plan. We can do this if everyone cooperates. Right. If we don't have people that don't want it. you know. Well, Carol and I happen to be a thorn in the industry's back in our area because we're holding up <coughs> production units of about 1,200 acres right now because we have people banding together. And there are others, another group over in East, East Smithfield who have come together and they're working together. And I can't, I can't stress how important mm -hmm. working together is. Even if you can't be agreeable on all terms, find some common way to work together because someone may, may work together for the pipeline agreement. Maybe they don't want pipeline, but they still should be in your group because they're important to say no, you're important to say yes under certain terms. And it's really important that you don't allow, the industry will, will work really hard. They'll come to your house and say, your neighbor didn't sign. Your neighbor X and X didn't sign. Are you gonna sign? You'll get more money. You know, or, or they will come to your house and say, neighbor Smith and neighbor Jones signed and, and it's you your turn, so. you have to sign. So but in reality, when you do check it out, it's not true. They never sign in the So they, they work at, at pitting neighbor against neighbors. Neighbors get jealous because they think they're going to make a whole lot of money. So it works in a lot of ways. But it does cause great conflict. I, I do want to say also about um, a, a farmer. She inherited her farm. And they got divorced. But when he found out that there was a well permitted on her property, she started, he started suing her for a million dollars. This woman already works three other jobs besides farming. And she's not getting anything yet. And she's not going to receive anything yet. Okay. Uh, we, we really need to hear from the town board. Roxanne? Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say after that. I want to thank you all three of you for coming and I just want to say I have the utmost admiration for the both of you Carol and Carolyn going or putting your time into this in addition to all that you're dealing with in your life it's it's really it's really amazing thank you so yeah. much for coming here.